Ladies and gentlemen, the plays the thing with your host, Judy Sleed. Special guest, Phil Berg, one of Montauk's most recognizable figures. Now, here's Judy, Judy, Judy. Yes, welcome to the play is the thing. And I have a wonderful playmate with me. <laughs> this Phil. Hi, Phil Berg. Hi, you sound like you, Hefner. <laughs> so great to have you in that chair. Now I could ask you all sorts of questions. Oh, and this, not ooh. only me, the whole world will know all about you, what mm. you do. You're going to put me on the spot, huh? Yes. Exactly, that is my oh, aim. <laughs> oh, that's fine with me. <laughs> and uh, you have a wonderful companion there, uh, Uma. And uh, he's your partner. She, I'm sorry, she's your partner, right? Yeah, she just heard the camera move. She's looking at the camera. Oh, <laughs> well, just like everybody else, yeah. she's a ham. <laughs> she wants to be on the camera. Well, that is good. You have given me this book that you had written. I want to show it to everybody. It's called Travels with Uma. Your dog's name is Uma, U-M-M-A. And you talk about, well, you can't see it too well, but it's a wonderful book by <coughs> Phil Berg. Maybe they can zoom in on you. I was hoping yeah, that they oh, would. Look out. Oh, yeah, there look at go. that. See, you're sitting on a motorcycle with Uma behind you, right? Yep. Great. Now, I read this book. It's fascinating. It talks about your travels. How did you come about writing all about this? I was out in California. Uh, well, yeah. But, I was looking for a new place to live. I wasn't very happy with what was going around, uh, going on around East Hampton and Montauk. I was really upset about the politics and what was going on. So I was, I was pretty busy. I was making some money. So I, I went out to California for the winter. My, the boss, my boss, the guy that taught me how to drive a tractor trailer when I was a kid, lives in San Diego, and my son was going to college out there. So I said, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. And I took my motorcycle and my trailer and my truck, and I went out to. San Diego for the winter, and I was just riding around and, you know, having dinner with my son. And, and Oscar was, uh, he was, he, he, I was, I was, I think I was 20 years old when I met him. And he took me under his wing, and he, he taught me a lot of stuff. He taught me how to drive a truck, you know, big, that, that was, that's a big skill. He taught me how to work, how to move furniture. There's a, there's a whole set of skills that go with that. And uh, he taught me how to be, you know, to be good around people, how to, you know, how to, how to just socialize. I saw him say to a waitress one time in, in uh, Virginia, he said to her, he says, are you a rancher? And she goes, why no, why do you ask? And he says, you had such nice calves, I couldn't resist. Uh -huh. I thought that was the corniest thing I'd ever heard. And he's a West Virginia hillbilly. But you know what? The girls loved it. And I learned a lesson from that. He could schmooze with the best of them. So I was out in San Diego. And I kept, right next door, I would go for coffee. There's a little, there was a big shopping center not far away from Oscar's house. And I kept getting this coffee cup that said, a writer is somebody who wrote today. And I wasn't doing much except ride my motorcycle around. What a wonderful uh, phrase that is. A writer is someone who wrote today. Yeah. Wow. It's what almost... a simple thing, right? Yes, it and, is. And uh, they say that on those uh, Starbucks coffee cups. The same thing? Well, that's what it was. It was a Starbucks, and they, they, that's what oh. it said on the coffee cup. And How I kept come getting I never it. noticed that? You better start reading. <laughs> <laughs> so I kept yes. getting that coffee cup, and finally I said, you know what? Mm -hmm. I heard you, I said to the guy mm -hmm. upstairs. And mm -hmm. I just started writing. And I didn't know how I was going to do it all, but I said, I'm a fairly smart fellow. I'll get it done. Watch the water. And uh, <laughs> I, I, it's about a month's worth of my travels. And it's the last of my stay in San Diego for the winter and my ride back to New York. And then I turned it into a book. And, you know, I just started. I, I, what I first had to do was take it to a girl with a computer and she had to type it out. And then it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And you make sure you wrote, you know, the correct mm -hmm. spellings and that everything sounds right. And you wanted everything in the right places, the bumper stickers and the pictures and all this stuff. And about three days before that book came out, I said, I was about ready to get the book. And the, 
a friend of mine was printing at the Montauk print shop, Mike Kinney. And I went, man, this is like taking your clothes off on Main Street. Because that's <laughs> that book is me when you yeah. read it. That's what I sound uh -huh. like. That's uh, and uh, I said, well, not like I haven't done that before. And I, they came out, and the first two weeks, uh, the first week I, I had two signings. I had one at the dog food store in Amagansett. On a, a book Saturday. signing. You had a book signing. I had a book signing. Yeah. What did I say? I just, it wasn't clear. I just wanted to make sure everybody heard gotcha. it. So I had a book signing at the <laughs> bookstore, at the dog food store in Amagansett, mm -hmm. One Stop Pet. And then the next week, I had one in Montauk at the bookstore. And I sold 200 copies of my book, and that was enough to pay for the printing. And after that, I didn't care. I was completely thrilled. So you did what you wanted to do. And, well, it, it's a good feeling when somebody is reading what you are writing. I get a lot of nice... Yeah. Uh, you got a lot of nice feedback. Yeah, I get lots of nice feedback from people. Great. And when you did the book signing, did you serve re refreshments? Did somebody sponsor you? Uh, well, I served refreshments. I went to Mary's Marvelous in Amagansett. Oh, that's a great place. And I had coffee and donuts and muffins. Mm -hmm. uh, and, all. and then at the, at the bookstore in Montauk, yeah. I had a whole bunch of tubs with beer and soda in them. Wow. <laughs> you got and some wine. My, my friends don't drink much <laughs> wine, so it was mostly beer. Yes, I'm sure you get a lot of. So, well, is, this is something new that uh, you're doing, writing. Are you planning on writing some other things or expanding on this? I don't know what I, I'm getting. I just turned 60 this year, this past year. <gasps> oh, my gosh. You don't care who knows. No, and I love it. I, I can't <laughs> believe I made it that far. At the rate I was going, back when I was going, I didn't think I'd get here. So every day is a gift. And... Uh, what I realized is that as I'm starting to get a little older, and, it, and it's not so much older in the sense of being an old man, it's older in that I'm, I, I can't even use the word, I can't say it, m m mature. Mature? <laughs> oh, so, my gosh. That word is disgusting. Oh, my, that's a terrible yeah. word. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, it's, what I realized is that I want to do something more with my life. I want to start giving stuff back. And that's why I started my own television show, uh -huh. I, I went to a couple of uh, town board meetings in Montauk last winter, and I said, these people should be taken out and shot. If you call this leadership, it's unbelievable. Uh -huh. Wow, and nobody shot you for saying that. H huh? No one shot you for saying that. If they're going to shoot me, they better have a big gun and hit me <laughs> twice, because if I get to them, it's going to be trouble. Wow, that sounds scary. I got no problem with going up against anybody. None. I know, but to me, you don't sound so scary. You are just about as nice as, as Uma here. What do you say, Uma? Do you think this is very interesting, what we're talking about? She doesn't care. She's just comfortable sitting here by me. Oh, uh, what a loyal friend that is. Yeah. That is a loyal friend. I was, I was watching TV this morning. It was a great show on, on, uh, on 21, and it was about these two rescue dogs. This One guy was a bloodhound guy, and the woman over in England was a, a bearded collie woman. And they, they did a story on how they, the two of these people in two different countries, how they rescued the dog from, you know, what a mess it was in. And they, they took it and they, they took the dog and started training it. And they trained it for what it was meant to be. And the difference within 12 or 14 weeks, the dog went from being uncontrollable and unlivable for somebody to going to work for the state of Massachusetts and being a sheepdog in England. And you, I was watching that, and I, and I just, I was having a gratitude attack. And this mm -hmm. afternoon, I did a show with, with this friend of mine who's a woman, and she has four horses. And she's uh -huh. horse nuts, and I'm dog nuts. So we were talking about the similarities. What's her name, and, Christine? Uh, no, Mary Lou is her name. Oh, because I had a lady on my show, Christine. She, was a, she has a horse farm. Uh-huh. Yes. If and it is wonderful. People who love animals are really wonderful people. They can't be bad. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yeah, they, it's really great. So where was the show? You said you were on her show. Oh, I was back in Springs, back by Pizza and Things, and the uh -huh. liquor store, the fire department. I think it's, uh, oh, I can't remember the name right now. Mm -hmm. Back past Ashwa Hall. Yes. And there's a big field there, Dr. Cavanaugh's field. And oh. this girl has her horses, and Dr. Kavanaugh, he's a, the uh, 
chiropractor. chiropractor. I know him. He has a on North practice Main Street. here in East Hampton. Yeah, on North Main Street. Yeah. So she keeps her horses at his barn. So we went out there and, and spent uh, 45 minutes talking about horses and dogs and oh, and she taped and her it. philosophy on. Excuse me, I'm gonna. I got a cold and I'm gonna sneeze. Oh, but her put philosophy. Put your nose, on, your <laughs> finger under. Put my mustache <laughs> in my nose. <laughs> That's probably as your mustache is tickling your nose. Did you ever think of that? Did you ever think about think of uh, shaving your mustache off? I shaved it twice in my life since I've had it. Really? You have a picture? One, no. It was so long ago. Once in college, I shaved the two ends off so I looked like Hitler, and that was pretty <laughs> stupid. That was one of the ugliest things I ever did. And that must have been scary. And then <laughs> when I was driving across country with Oscar, he got some girl, this really good-looking waitress in St. Louis, to say I'd look better without my mustache, and I shaved it off. And I could feel my lip curling over my nose when I smiled. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny. So I just, I've always Actually, had Actually, you know what? I never discussed this with anybody. I never discussed want? mustache oh. with or without mustache. <laughs> it's a good topic, though. You want me to give you a kiss and you can see what it's like? I don't think I'd like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think maybe that would be a good subject for you to write another book. Mustache. I would title it Mustache. With or without. And your experiences with the mustache and with that, and how you people reacted to you and how you felt. See, I just gave you a whole outline of how to do it. And uh, probably not going to happen, though. Oh, I'm so disappointed. But we could write, you know, just like a, a, you did with this, some little sketches, and then you could put it all together. My mustache and I. <laughs> So what else? How did you, was, how do you, how do you make your living? Can I ask you, or is that something well, you don't want to talk about? Well, it's top secret, really. Oh, it's top secret. Yeah. Okay, we don't. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> uh, first, I went to, uh, this summer. A guy I knew from when I was growing up. He lived in the same hometown. He also lives in Montauk, and I ran into him this spring, and he was, he said, Phil, you know, are you writing another book? And I said, No. He says, You know, you really should. That was really terrific. So okay. I almost got inspired to write another book. Yeah. But. Uh, not quite, because it's a lot of work. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's, you know, that, that's a month's worth of travels and writing down what happens every day. It's not a lot of writing, but, you know, it's an hour a day. And then when I got back, it was, it took me till the end of the summer to get it, which Damn. probably isn't a big deal, but that's only a little book, but it was a lot of work. But How did you like uh, the book party where you had to, when you gave autographs and sang, wasn't that fun to meet all I those different ball. people? Yeah. Because I like that. Me, yeah, it was all, a lot of my friends showed up and people, you know, well, I mm -hmm. know everybody in Montauk, so, you know, a lot of people showed up and they, you know, buy my book and it was, it was like, wow, people want to buy something I wrote. It was. It must, it's very gratifying. So where were you born? I was born in Brooklyn in 1949. Wow, what part of Brooklyn? Kings County Hospital. I lived by Prospect Park. You lived in Prospect Park? Well, by it, about four blocks away, maybe. Uh-huh. And then when I was five years old, I moved out to Malvern, and I started school in Malvern. I went there for... Uh, That's Queens, right? Uh, no, it's right on the border of Nassau and Queens. I'm in Nassau County on the South Shore. I'm, this, I'm probably one town in. There's Valley Stream. Yes. Ozone Park is in Queens, I yes. think. Then there's Valley Stream, and then there's Malvern. And it's in between uh -huh. Rockville Center, West Hempstead, Valley Stream, Limbrook. I used to live in Baldwin. That's not far away. I used to, there was a playland in Baldwin we used to go to. Yes. It, uh, that's where I lived most of my married life. And, and then, then once I became, uh, we traveled every summer, my parents. We would always go somewhere, camp across country, up, you know, all over the place. How and many siblings you have? Two, my brother and sister. Oh, are you, is he older than you? No, I'm the oldest. My brother lives upstate and my sister lives in Colorado. Upstate where? In the Jewish Alps, Monticello. Monticello, I used to go there when they had the borscht, borscht, the borscht circuit. Belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, I used to go. They had uh, the Concord was in Monticello. Yeah, I think my, my, my brother worked there. Wow. He used to work on the mountain. He used to work on a ski mountain there. At the, Con the Concord has a mountain, a little hill where people ski on. I think so, yes. Do you see him? Oh, uh, yeah. I he like comes here, and, or you go up there. I go it's up there. Beautiful he comes out a couple there. times every summer, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, I go up there. A couple, well, 
a couple times a year, maybe. So, uh, if if when you're not writing, what are you doing? Oh, the question was, what do I do for a living? I do yeah. tree work. I got a backhoe and a, and a uh, and a chipper and a cherry picker, which is a bucket truck. You know, it's got a bucket up at the top of a mast, and uh, I do tree work. Trim them, take them down, whatever they need. Rip the stumps out, clear brush. Oh, and, and uh, I guess you learned a lot when you were traveling from Oscar, right? Well, I learned from Oscar how to drive a truck, and I learned not to be afraid of work. And uh, I learned a lot of skills from him, especially, you know, like if I hit something, it's moving. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so if I push well, against it, Well, we could it, take it in a lot of different ways. Well, you can <laughs> take it, it any way you want. sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> if I hit it, it's moving. And so then you I, have your own business? Or? Yeah, I had a crane service out in Montauk, and then I went through a divorce. And I ended up upstate, and my brother and I bought a backhoe, and then I, a neighbor asked me if I would trim some trees for him. So I, I got the equipment, and I started learning how to do it, and the guy showed me the knot, you know, that you need to slide out of the tree. And I started doing it, it was probably 25 years ago, and I was making $250 a day climbing wow. trees. And I used to jump out on the rope and rappel out of a tree. So I, did, I was like, you get paid to do this? This is too much fun. <laughs> and I climbed trees until I was about 45. Wow. Too but, bad you could have gone to work in the circus. Yeah. I could watch those ballerinas up there, those trapeze girls. <laughs> you see, your mind just goes always a little yeah, different. Yeah, I'm a sick man. You're a sick I'm man. I'm a sick man, yeah. So while you're here, how long have you been uh, back? You are you live in East Hampton or Montauk now? I live in Montauk. I lived in East Hampton. I, had a, I bought a house up in, on five... I think it was 581, 581 Springs Fireplace Road. And uh, I had a sawmill, and I started making things. I built three, three buildings at my property, and I timber framed them. And I, went to, I took a class on timber framing. And, and I, what is that? Timber framing is uh, like windmills are made that way. You know, you, you, you mortise and tenon the joinery. You make a hole in a piece of wood, and you make a tenon on, on another piece of wood, and they slide in. And the wood's wet, and then you drive wooden nails into it. I have to try that. Oh, I could see you doing that. <laughs> so you still have those houses? Oh uh, no, I sold that. I love I love building them, but I don't like maintaining them. Oh. And I had a ball. I had I had my little house, and I had a little shack behind the house, and it was my son's bedroom. It was 12, 12 by sixteen, and I had like a cesspool ring underneath it that was the basement, and I had water and sewer and electric lines and telephone and. TV coming out of the house, and, and there was all kinds of, you know, there was an outside shower out there, and there was a loft upstairs, and he would sleep up it's, there. And uh, You designed it yourself? I did everything myself. It was in my head, and I made it, and I built it, and, and then so, I would make furniture. My grandfather was a woodworker, and so was my father a little bit, but my grandfather was really spectacular. All my, my mother's furniture is my grandfather made. Four-poster bed, oh. dresser, un it's, it's, very interesting. You have many hats, as yes, I said. Yes, and, and I enjoy every one of them. And it's, now you live in Montauk? Yeah, I moved out. I sold the house. I was going to buy another one, but that deal fell through. And then I moved back to Montauk, back to my mom's house. I built that house about 30 years ago for her. Uh, so, so and she's you... getting older, so it's, you know, she, I, I don't think she hates having me around. <laughs> That's funny. Her cesspool and, went bad. I had to rip the whole front yard out. And what about your son? What is he? My into? son is 25, and he just went out to San Diego yesterday. I put him on a plane yesterday. Him and his dog. He's got one of Uma's babies. Oh. And his dog is a therapy dog also. This, Uma is a therapy dog. What does I, that mean? It means that she's been tested and found not wanting. It's an advanced obedience test. Say that again. It's, you take the dog to a, it's called Therapy Dog International. And if you, put a, if you go online, you can Google them. Therapy Dog International TDI. And you go online, and they'll tell you what, what they expect out of the dog when they give the test. And you go to the, there's, you can take a test any weekend you want. Jersey, upstate New York, sometimes on Long Island. But you can go any weekend you want and take the test with your dog. And the dog has to be okay around hospital equipment. Uh, if there's food on the floor, the dog has to walk away from the food at a command. Uh, it has to be able to stay with somebody for five minutes. Um, it has to not be afraid of loud noises. All kinds of stuff. Oh, you mean uh, the dog is uh, trained to be around sick people? Yes, I can take. Once the dog has passed the test, they know that she can go in a hospital 
And no matter what happens, like if a bedpan falls off and hits a floor like this, it makes a hellacious noise. Of course. The, the dog can't jump and run. When the girl got done testing Uma, she said, that dog's bomb proof. That is amazing. So did you teach her to be that way? Yes, I trained her. And then my son got one of her puppies. And him and his buddy were training it all the time. And then when he came back, he was gone about a year, year and a half. And when he came back, he said, I'd like to do that, Dad. So we found mm -hmm. out, and we went to Jersey and took the test. And his dog passed the test. And the beauty, one of the beauties is you can just get on a plane with the dog. The dog gets right on the plane with you. It, I never heard of this. Oh, yeah, you just walk, you know, you call him, you say, hey, I'm coming. I got a dog with me. It's a therapy dog. They say, okay. They put you in a spot where you could, got a little bit more room, usually by a bulkhead. And you get on a plane, the dog sits on the floor, and off you go to California or wherever you're going. So you could do that also. Would you like to do that? There's a, a trade to get paid for it? Uh, maybe. How long does it take to train a dog well, like that? Not very long. Well, it, you know, you, t to get a good dog, you've got to spend a lot of time with them. And, it, you know, I'm not going to raise a dog for some idiot. That's the problem. Because <laughs> most uh -huh. people don't know anything about dogs, yet they want something like this. Or they see yes. boom and they go, oh, my God, if I had a dog like that, I, oh. Uh, yes. It doesn't take that much, but it, it is, a, I guess it does take a bit. But you also got to have some knowledge and how a dog works in its mind. Right, and, and you, you have to have the right person to have a dog like that. Well, yeah, like, she, this dog is called a companion dog. In its title, it says Weimaraner, CD. Mm -hmm. That means companion dog. That means you don't leave the dog at home, you don't put it in a cage. Right. You, you take do, the dog you don't everywhere let, you go. Yeah, and you don't let leave it out and let it bark all night. Right. It's, these are things you don't do. I mm -hmm. saw a guy, I ran into a woman one time, I saw her running with this Weimaraner stuff. I want to know everybody in town that's got Weimaraner, so I stop them all the time. So she goes, oh, come by my house. I think my husband needs some tree work. So I went by, they had a Weimaraner. This guy had more money than God. He had this beautiful Italian, you know, marble castle going up. He's got the dog in a cage. Oh, oh how And he's awful. sitting around working or doing something around the house. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what's the dog doing in a cage? Well, yeah. it's not, you know, there's always an excuse. Of course. Yeah. You, you don't get away with that with me. The dog needs to be with you doing stuff. If you can't do that, don't get the dog. There's too I many agree. ruined dogs sitting in art because of that. Yes. Right. I agree with you. Totally. Totally. So, so uh, you know, I've had a lot of these dogs, and uh, every one I've had has been a legend in their own time. Oh, you, this is not the first? No, this is my... Uh, third or fourth, and then it's probably about my hundredth in my family. Uma's had two litters of puppies, they're 16. So how old is Uma? Uma's eight years old. So how many dogs, how long do they live? About 13, 14 years old. 12, 13, 14, somewhere in there. So when you, get, you had the dogs and when they passed away, you had them until they passed away yeah. or? Did you give them out to breed or what? Well, no, I did all that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, it's pretty darn spectacular. <laughs> you know, you don't do anything. You take you take the dogs. You stick. I read this great book by this woman who's autistic, and she talks about animal intelligence and animals make us human. She's unbelievable, mm -hmm. and she says you get what you breed. And I was thinking about going to look for some AKC Weimaraner when I knew this kid in town, Dan Michaels, Ed Michaels' son from the Marine Patrol. And he is, Ed Michaels called me up and says, my son's thinking about getting a wine runner. Talk him out of it. I did such a good job of talking him out of it, he went and got one. <laughs> I saw this dog about six or nine months later, and I went, wow, what a beautiful animal. And this kid, he's got a desk job. He takes the dog to work with him. He's an architect's uh -huh. assistant or something. So he would take the dog to work. But every two hours, he would take it out, train it. dog was spectacular. I bred it. All you got to do is put the two of them together, and they're going to have fun. I think we wore old uh, Frank out. <laughs> so Frank had a great time, and mm -hmm. uh, but then she had the puppies, and then once she has puppies, I have all the neighborhood kids constantly coming over. Every day the kids come over and play with the puppies and socialize, and then Uma's not afraid of anybody, and it, the, the, the puppies are not afraid of humans, and uh, it, it, there's a whole... But uh, you have to watch them because sometimes kids tend to uh, well, do yeah, things we, to know, dogs that are not Everybody very nice. was watching everybody else. Yeah. It is amazing. Look at her, how she's just so comfortable there. And she doesn't even care that you talk about her. Just look at her. Other dogs would just want to say something and say, don't talk like that about me. 
<laughs> I can't believe we got it. We got two and a half minutes left. What else you want to talk about? What well, other questions you want to ask? Do you want to get married again? No, once was enough for me. <laughs> Boy, that was a quick answer. Oof. Quick. <laughs> well, um, I love women, but I don't know if it's I don't uh, for me. I don't know if it's possible to have a relationship with a woman and do the things that they want to do. You have different ideas what you want to do. Well, I but don't put life. it all on them what they want to do. Don't, 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 I mean, it's, because it's I have I feel the same way. You know, I'm not married, and uh, I don't think I would want to share my life with somebody else because of what they want to do. Because yeah, I, I want to do I, what I, got, I want to do. I got a full life. <laughs> me too. So, you know, if, if somehow we yeah. can have a full life so together. So there's no hope for me. Huh? There's no hope for me. Well, I don't know if you want hope. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try to find all the, fem all the males that come on my show or anywhere. They're you're, not you're, married. Oh, I always ask them. You're well, worse than me, then. <laughs> I, I always you're the female version. <laughs> well, it's fun to talk about it. Isn't it is. It? You know, thank yeah. God, I think God has a great sense of humor. Because when men are younger, you know, at 13, it's like, <laughs> they'll yeah. do anything to have sex. Anything. They'll marry you. They'll yes. give you everything they got. Right. At 40, God changes the rules. <laughs> All of a sudden, women know how to control their bodies, how to enjoy themselves. And men start slowing down. At and, 40? Yeah, men, men start slowing down. They're, they're, not, every six not seconds, everybody. a man I, takes, I know a man. males who are very active. In oh, like absolutely. It. But they, they, they slow down a little bit at 40. Oh. They're not yeah. every six seconds. Maybe it's every 10. <laughs> well, I have to say thank you for coming on my show. You brightened up the screen. And just expect a lot of people stopping you, asking for your autograph. Oh, I can't wait. Man. Yes. I'm going to autograph my book for them. <laughs> At least it'll be something worthwhile. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you for watching. The play is the thing. And uh, don't forget to tune in. It all depends where you are in different towns and different areas. It's always uh, a different channel. But you'll find me. Just look for the play is the thing. And uh, you hear that pretty song? Yes. Ever. Yes. Keep That's coming her. back. Plays the thing. Yes. This is the place. <laughs> this is the place this for This is it. the place for the play. See you yes. guys. Right.